Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Illustrator scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you all about the application properties and methods accessible inside of Adobe Illustrator scripting. This is basically all of the information about the actual application you have open, as well as different methods or functions you can run, for example, opening up documents or redrawing and things like that. So in this tutorial, we're just going to be going over the most common and easy to use ones that are most useful for you and what they can entail for your scripting. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description of this video, you can check out our GitHub and Instagram links and follow us on there to get updates on things. Also, make sure you head on over to our Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And you can also become a YouTube channel member uh, with these different support tiers and get cool perks along the way while helping support our YouTube channel. So in today's video, like I said, we're gonna be going over all of the application uh, information available. Inside the scripting guide, you can go to application and basically this is where we're sourcing all of the information that we're going over today. I'm just gonna kinda go over line by line what I think the most useful properties and functions are. So let's just go through here. Some of these um, I'm going to go ahead and write into the JavaScript console, and other ones I'm just going to actually run and show you what they do inside of Illustrator itself. So the first one is actually app.activeDocument. If I don't have an open document in Illustrator, this will give me a null value. So in order to get a feedback from this uh, property, you wanna make sure you have something open, and then once you run app.activeDocument, it's going to return an object representing that entire document. So in order for that to work, I'll need to basically have something open here. And now if I go ahead and run the script, it's actually gonna take a second because it has a lot of information to load, but once it's done, it's going to display all of the rest of the information we're gonna go over. The first of which is the build number of our application. This will give you the specific information about uh, your build of Adobe Illustrator. So for active document, it gave us this name of our document here, which is just document untitled one. And then for our build number, we have 585R. So that's kind of an internal build number, but you can still get that as well. We then have app.coordinate system, and this gives us the document coordinate system, which I believe is just the default. Then next we have app.documents, which will give us access to any multiple documents we have open. It will return them in an array. So if we have a whole bunch of things open, we can return them all into an array object like that. You can also access the free memory of the application, which in this case is returning a large negative number. So it is possible that that's not going to be very useful information for whatever your scripting purposes might be, but it is available there. And we have app.name, which could be useful for differentiating when you're inside of Illustrator versus other applications. And this, of course, returns Adobe Illustrator. We have our app.path, which returns the... Uh, we have app.path, which will give us the actual path to this application. So this could be useful for getting the sort of versioning number or other information you want just by referencing the path where the executable is. You can also get the application preferences object, which is a totally different uh, subject in itself and goes very deep into the preferences of Illustrator, but you can get access to that and start playing around with it. And we have the printer list, which is extremely cool. If you have an open document, you can get a list of all the available printers that are uh, on your system. And in the future, I will make an automation script to handle printing. Then we have the text fonts object, which we can get, which is very useful in getting every single font installed uh, for Illustrator, essentially. And each one of these text fonts has its own individual object with information inside of it that's of much use. Then we have app.version, which is a bit different than the build number, and this will give us the actual version number, in this case, 23.0.3. .3. Next up, we have a list of all the useful methods that we can run inside of Illustrator. The first of which is application.beep, which I don't really have a use for, but essentially it's supposed to alert the user. I haven't found any specific use for this, so if you find something useful of it, let me know. Then we have some useful built-in menu functions that are essentially just like going up to the edit menu. We have app.copy, app.cut, and app.paste. These do exactly what you would expect them to with the copy, cut, and paste features that you would normally experience. So that's actually pretty cool that you can have basically a bunch of things selected and then easily go in and copy and paste them 
like you were just working normally. The next method is app.open. We can provide this with an Illustrator file and open it up. So in this case, I have one reference to my documents and it will simply load it up given a proper file path. I'm gonna go kind of out of order here just because these are in alphabetical order, but the usefulness, uh, we'll start with undo. You can do app.undo, similarly to how we can copy, cut, and paste. We can run something and undo it uh, from up in our edit context menu. So maybe if I move this and scale it up, I can then undo that one time by going into there. And you could easily stack these undos up and then just go through and undo multiple steps at the same time. And of course we have app.redo where we could easily redo those steps as well for however many times you want. The second to last method is app.redraw. This will allow you to essentially redraw your entire canvas. Let's say you've applied a whole bunch of automation effects, maybe some image tracing. Now you can use app.redraw to essentially refresh everything and make sure it's updated all of the changes you've made. And lastly, we have app.quit, which as you can imagine, will run the quit operation and of course bring up if we want to save our documents. And this will be a useful way if you want to just close the program and do something else. But that's gonna do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's all about the Adobe Illustrator application properties and methods for scripting. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub and Instagram for updates. Of course, be sure to join the Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And you can help support the YouTube channel with different member levels and get cool perks along the way and help us out. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.